Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to show you how to create buttons for your web page. Now, this is going to be especially useful in our Intro to JavaScript course, and we're going to use buttons probably multiple times per week in order to invoke functions and basically gather some quick input from the user. A button is an input device. So, let's make sure we can see the quick and easy way to make some buttons and we'll take care of that. Now, I currently have a page open, but we're not too focused on HTML and CSS in our JavaScript class. We do need to know a little bit of it just to kind of get things out there and present it well to our audience. So what I'm going to do on this page, this is just my my work in progress index homepage. Um, let's see, I'm going to do file save as and I'm going to make a page called buttons.html. So I've got a new page called Buttons, and I'll just call it Practice with Buttons. There we go. Now I'm still going to reference my page element style sheet. I like that, but you know what? I'm going to have another style sheet on here too. Style slash, and I'm going to call these Form Elements. There are going to be several form elements that you're going to want to use in JavaScript. Buttons for one, you can visualize what a button is. But we're also going to be using a fair number of input text boxes. Those will come up from time to time. Uh, check boxes, radio buttons, text area boxes. So there's a number of JavaScripts that we are going to create where we want to get input from the user in some way. An input could be uh, mouse location, it could be clicking on something like a button, or it could be typing something into a text box. We're going to want to get that input from a user, process it, and then give some kind of output or feedback to the user. Now to keep track of our form styles, I'm going to create a CSS file called form elements. And then let's see, I'll still keep that external script in there. I'll change this out to button experimentation that's fine and I'm going to delete a lot of the stuff that's in here in the body of the page so now I've got this new web page called buttons.html now I do want a CSS file also so what I'm going to do is I'll just grab my other CSS file up here I'm going to do a file save as and this is going to be in my styles folder within my JavaScript folder my 133.js folder and I'm going to call this one form underscore elements dot CSS. Now for this one, I don't need my reset rule because the reset rule is in my other CSS file. And in fact, I don't need body or h1 or h2. That can be pretty blank for now, but I'm not done with it. I'm going to come back to it. So on my HTML file, let's look at two distinct ways we can create buttons. There's actually a few, but we're going to focus on two ways. And the easiest is probably going to be the button tag. So I can type out a button tag and there's an opening and closing button tag and then I can have some text here. So if I put text in between my opening and closing button tag, I'm going to get a button on the page. In fact, we can see how that's going to look. I'm going to use my go live extension for VS Code and that'll display this page in my browser of choice and ah, you can see I've got some text here. However, you can't see my button. Now, Part of the problem that I did here is I've got a reset rule. If you recall, I created this reset rule for my buttons, and that's affecting the look of my default button. For instance, if I did not have this, if I didn't have that reset rule, I'm going to put it back though. If I didn't have the reset rule, my button would be a little bit more visible. So that's okay. I'm going to control Z to undo. I'm putting my reset rule back into my page element CSS. I want it there. However, I need to understand that my default button look is not satisfactory. Now before I style that button, let's look at another way we can create a button. Input type equals button. Now the input method, notice it's an input tag, there's no closing input tag, and I do type equals button. You can also do type equals submit, and we're going to do those later on in the course once we really want to develop some more professional looking forms and we want to break the forms with our JavaScript if there's errors. Form validation basically. Um, however, I'll do value equals 
some text here. So to display text on a button using the button tag, we put text in between the opening and closing button tags. To display text on a button using the input tag, we put that text as a value for the value attribute. So the value attribute, some text here. And now I'm gonna have basically two buttons. They don't look that impressive though. That's where the styling comes into play. So I'm gonna head over to my form element CSS file and I wanna work on my buttons. I wanna work on my button tags, comma. I also wanna work on input square bracket type equals button. So this is a group selector, doesn't matter, but basically I wanna style both of these buttons the same way. And this is where you can take a little bit of creative license with your buttons. For my buttons, I'm gonna do a padding of one M top and bottom, two M's left and right. So that's gonna put some space around that button text. And I'm also gonna do a font size of 1.2 M's to make that font size a little bit bigger. And just so it really stands out to us, I'll also do font weight bold. Now just these changes here should give me something a little bit different to look at. And I can see that that text is definitely bigger. In addition to these text elements, I can also put a thin border on my buttons. I'll put something like um, four pixels solid and I'll just do something dark since I have a light background. Now we can really see those buttons. I'll put a little border radius on there. Um, let's see how four pixels looks. And that'll kind of notch the corners a little bit. So I got kind of a little rounded corner action. And I think I will also do background color and I'll do some kind of light yellow. So, so there's my buttons and they can be nicely seen. I'll do one more thing to kind of jazz these up a little bit. In fact, I'm gonna grab both of these and make another rule, but after the word button, I'll do colon hover, and after this square bracket for button type, or input type button, colon hover, and for these, background color, yellow green. So now when I hover over those, I'll get that green color effect. So that's all we really need. So we've got a couple things going on. The HTML in question, is a set of button tags, or it's gonna be an input with type equals button. Notice how we display text on those buttons in two different ways. Thanks for hanging out with me.